Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining me today and spending a few minutes together. This is your wonderfully geeky host, ID Jester. Today we are going to show you how to quickly and easily create awesome panoramic shots from your different pictures that you've taken in CS6 Photoshop quickly and easily. As you can see here, we've taken some, some pictures, combined them, have a nice border, edited and, edited and cropped the border out, did some post editing, and we wonder, we've edited up with a wonderful, nice panoramic shot. And we're going to show you how to do that quickly and easily. When you're out in the field or you're on vacation, when you want to create a panoramic photo, you know that's in the back of your mind, you actually want to take the steps necessary to do that while you're out taking your pictures. So some of the tips and tricks that I would tell you to do would be to make sure you have plenty of overlap from one picture to the next picture. And what I'm talking about is, if you look at this picture here, when I took this picture, when I want to take the next picture, I want to keep the, about 15 to 25% of the right side of my picture uh, on the next picture as well. So if we go to the next picture, we can see that this building, this brown building, was on the left-hand side. Oop, go back was on the right hand side of this picture and when we move rotate it's going to be on the left hand side but still plenty of extra overlap there if we go to the next shot you can see that this street here is on the left hand side we go to the next picture here and it's on the right hand uh, left hand side we got this building here on the right hand side edge here you can see we have a nice overlap for that on this picture as well so you want to keep a nice overlap between your pictures. You want to keep your horizontal plane about the same on each of your shots. That way when you combine them in Photoshop or another program, you don't have a lot of missing areas. You can see here that as I rotated here, I actually ended up getting lower and lower and lower on this shot. So when I crop it, I have to actually crop it I'm losing some off the edge and I'm losing some off the bottom. So another tip that I would give you is to make sure you zoom out slightly on your camera. When you zoom out, you're going to have more area you're taking pictures of. So when you do get some white area and you're cropping it, you can still get a lot of your original picture that you want to include in your shot. You can see that after I had taken these and combined them in Photoshop, this is what I'm ended up with. So I lost some off the top and I lost some off the bottom. So keep that in mind. Zoom out slightly. The other thing is to keep the same focal length sharpness for all your pictures. So if you take your first picture and you auto focus on whatever you think is the most important part, you want to then turn it on manual focus so that each of your pictures will have the same focal length in each shot. So in this case, if I was to focus on something in the background here, all the front would be blurry and the back would be sharp. And then if we took this picture over here and it was focused on, um, if it was focused on, get out of the way please, thank you. If it was focused on this stuff in the beginning, then this would be sharp and all this stuff in the background would be um, blurry. And in that case, these pictures wouldn't line up very well together. It wouldn't look right to have something in focus in the background here and something in focus in the foreground here. And this, of course, you're doing that specifically for a specific reason. So when you're doing a panoramic, you want to try to have everything normally, unless you're trying uh, something unusual or trying to just. Um, creates a, a different effect with your panoramic shot. You want to try to keep everything uh, focused in on uh, the same the same length, the same focal length uh, in your shots. So if we look at our pictures here, you can see that when I was out taking the pictures, the best way is obviously 
if you have a nice sturdy tripod on a flat surface it's easy to get your nice horizontal plane if you don't have a tripod and you're not on a nice flat even surface what you try to do is tuck your arms in on your side and hold them there tight and also lock in your head and neck with your arms and just barely turn uh, your feet as you rotate don't try to rotate with your arms and your neck and your head or you'll end up turning uh, the pitcher slightly as you move you can kind of see as you go left to right and that's try how I try to take all of them you can almost see that the horizontal goes up and then it's kind of slightly down and that's just from not being on a, on a flat surface and not having a tripod but you want to try to have your same height on your focal plane so you don't have a lot of these white areas to deal with where you're missing part of your image so what we're going to do here is we're going to select our pictures that we want for our Photoshop and I'm actually going to try something a little different this time I'm actually going to try these five pictures in a row you see pretty much the focal uh, horizontal plane is pretty accurate in all these this one might be slightly higher than the others but I'm going to try to actually use all five of these and all you have to do is basically remember 264 okay and we're going to right click edit in Photoshop 264 is our number here let's go into Photoshop when it loads up here and a lot of people don't understand or realize that Photoshop actually has an automated process that you can use already built into the program to create panoramic shots it's actually hidden deep inside the program you don't find it in the filters area you don't find it in the layers area you don't find it in the image area what you actually have to do is come under the file tab come down here to automate and you want to come down to photo merge so I don't even call it panoramic or anything but it's in the photo merge area when you click on that it's going to bring up a nice little menu and you can see there's quite a variety of different ones that you can try perspective cylindrical spherical etc etc all we have to do at this point is browse for our files 264 65 66 67 68 we'll see if this works I'm going to try five pictures side by side by side of course once I have my picture selected I can click on one to remove it add more pictures in whatever I want to do but they always seem to turn out better when you're out in the field and you know you want to get a panoramic to actually plan ahead and design it instead of just try to combine random pictures together so we're going to hit OK and hopefully I won't run into the issue I was running in earlier and we're going to see what happens and it's doing its processing and it's doing its build and it's combining everything and voila there we go we have five pictures step by step by step you can actually now that we're zoomed out maybe through the recording it's hard to see there's actually these lines here where you actually see where the different pictures are lined up and what it's using from each of the different pictures obviously when I zoom in that goes away it's just a I don't know if it's a graphical um, error or whatever it is but actually you can see when I zoom in when it's out you can almost see that line right there there's a line right there if we zoom in these lines obviously disappear one thing I should mention that I I don't believe I have mentioned yet is that uh, if you're taking pictures and it's a cloudy day you should try to take your pictures as quickly one after the other as possible because you don't want your clouds moving too far across the sky when you're trying to um, take pictures or else when it tries to combine the pictures it'll confuse it slightly and um, could cause some blurriness in the sky 
So we are actually going to come up here to our tool, rectangle tool here, and I'm actually going to, uh, before I do that actually, I'm going to file, save as, I'm going to actually save this. And we're going to just call it, we are actually going to just call this Paris Panorama 1. And OK. And this way, after I've made changes and cropped it and everything else, I can always come back to this original one and do it again. Now we're going to combine our layers here, merge them all together, oops, merge them all together, merge layers. There we go. So now they're all on one plane. Then we'll come up to our rectangle tool and we're going to select it. Yep, too much. And you can see that just by not having it exactly where I needed it, I'm losing a lot on the top and some on the bottom. And that's another good reason to make sure you're zoomed out a little bit so you, when you lose that bit on the top and the bit on the bottom, you can plan ahead for that. I'm actually going to slide this over, I think, a little bit. So I have the Eiffel Tower. There we go. And that doesn't look too bad. We'll go ahead and crop that. There we go. This is on top of the Arch de Triomphe in Paris, France, um, back in 2011. And you can see that. Um, because I haven't edited my pictures, uh, it was easily combined them together. Now that's now that we have them, it's time to start our edit process. We're going to go ahead and bring in our whites, bring in our blacks, just not so much. Adjust our midtones slightly, like there we go. That's not too bad. Uh, then we're going to use our shadows and highlights, and you'll see some of that stuff. Shadows, obviously, are going to lighten up your shadows. And you can adjust the tonal width on that until you see something that looks good. Highlights, the opposite. You can see that when I do the highlights, the sky is going to darken a little bit. And that looks okay for right now. And last but not least, I want to go into my selective colors, go to my whites. I'm actually going to make my whites. You can see when I deal with my whites and make them whiter, it actually makes the clouds look more three-dimensional, gives them more punch and pizzazz. We go into our cyans, we can make them a little darker. And our blues, make them a little darker as well. Neutrals. You can see when I quite a variation of what you like or don't like. I'm actually going to make that a little bit darker. There we go. And our blacks. This is what's going to give everything three-dimensional look. All right. And then for those of you who have watched our previous video on lab sharpening, I set up an action. I show you how to set up this action. And now that we've already set it up, we can actually go in and click the play button and voila. All right, now that we made a little bit of uh, post editing, we can actually zoom in. You can see things are a lot sharper. And we'll go ahead and save as. Uh, I'm just going to save this as. We'll save this as number two. And put an E down so I know that this one has been edited. So this is to edit. And hit the save button maximum, of course. And we go back into our white room. And we're going to synchronize our folder that we are saving everything in. You can see our panoramic shots popping in there. And we click on our panoramic. And we actually have our original pre-edited. Um, again, lost a lot of white area just because I didn't line that up quite right. When the processes and the algorithms process through, it um, lined up the pictures properly. And unfortunately for us, uh, I lost quite a bit there off the top. 
and then we go into this is our after before after you can see that that uh, lab 20 sharpening is definitely oops I keep forgetting I can't zoom with the mouse and this but I did it again huh. okay got to do it the hard way there we go and we got some nice sharpening going on there clouds with some details and it looks like a, we go all the way from uh, let's see all the way on the left hand side here this is uh, Shakakur I believe the temple there all the way around to the Eiffel Tower from the top of the Arch de Triomphe Paris France so there you go folks uh, it's actually quite an easy process the, the main thing is to make sure when you're out in the field or you're on vacation you want to get a nice three or four or five picture panoramic view you want to make sure that you take the pictures one right after the other don't try to just randomly throw four or five pictures you took on vacation that look pretty good together don't do any pre um, edits to your photographs until you've combined them all make sure you try to keep the same horizontal plane for all of your pictures make sure you have a good 15 to 20 to 25 percent overlap of each of your pictures and make sure you have the same focal length for all of your pictures so that everything is in focus um, throughout your whole shot and there you go there's a panoramic view of those for those of you who have not visited Paris yet and there it is I hope you enjoyed it please do thumbs up if you learned something new or if you thought this video uh, helped you at all be sure to leave any thoughts comments suggestions uh, down uh, in the um, chat log there and I will be sure to reply to your comments as well. Again, thank you all for spending a few minutes today. And hopefully this was educational. And you learned something new that uh, you can now use later on when you're out taking your pictures on vacation. Keep those arms tucked in. Keep the pit, uh, camera at the same height. Don't try to turn your arms or your head or your neck keep everything locked together and just rotate with your feet same focal length uh, overlap on your pictures and take several several series of shots you can see here I have uh, zoom out a little bit here you can see I have several different groups uh, left to right four or five 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 and hopefully one of those you'll be able to use when you get home to create you a beautiful panoramic shot that you can then print out and have to enjoy thank you so much for joining me until the next time we get to speak together this is id jester signing off